from here I can see that my um, I've got back to finding what you want me to do review movies well I've already reviewed the first Candyman movie a movie which I adore a movie that scared me when I was a little kid I made a big review out of it that's like the third time I've done that now there's like three Candyman films that I've reviewed but now we've come to the sequel that came out in the year of 1995 yeah, I have it right here on Blu-ray. This is Candyman Farewell to the Flesh, made in 1995. And it is indeed Blu-ray. Looks nice by the front cover. Show you it all real quick. That's what it looks like. Disc and, of course, a little booklet. Okay, um... How do I feel about this movie? Mixed to negative. And I'll get to my reasons and why I've got mixed to negative reviews about this movie. Candyman 2 Farewell to the Flesh Made in the Year 1995. Let's talk about the first movie. First of all, it was scary. The scenes were intense. And when I was a kid, when I watched it, it got me on the edge of my seat. You know, when someone was about to say Candyman five times in the mirror, I used to be like, you know, what the fuck's going to happen? You know, it was made to scare the audience and it worked, especially for me. So why does Candyman Farewell to the Flesh do the opposite to that? You know, there were so many things that I did not like about Candyman Farewell to the Flesh. I like it up to the point where I got it on Blu-ray. And as it's part of my collection, I'd say overall this movie was like a mediocre movie, but it also felt like it was like the first movie, but retold again. That's all this movie felt like. It felt like a retelling of the first movie, but with a less convincing, nice feel to it, if you get what I mean. Because this movie, it didn't scare me, not one little bit. Of course, I was a little bit older when I saw Candyman 2. I mean, the first movie, I was like 10 or 11 years old when I saw the first Candyman movie, so it scared me. But this movie I saw when I was about 12, 13, and it did scare me. I was interested to see what would happen. Let's talk about the first thing that disappointed me, first of all. They put it out to the ending of the first movie. This movie's got no connection with the first movie whatsoever. There's only two actors that were inspired their roles. And that's Tony Todd who plays Candyman. And of course, um, Purcell, who's the storyteller about the Candyman. The guy who told the Candyman urban legend to um, Helen Loyal in the first movie. He's in this. And he's in the first scene of this movie. He's retelling the story about Candyman to these people in a library. And he says Candyman five times in his reflection of this book that he wrote. And then he encounters this guy by the name of Ethan Tarrant, who we learn had a deceased father. And he's blaming Purcell for his father's death because he told him to say Candyman five times in the mirror and he did so and he ended up getting killed. Yeah, but again, they pushed out the end of the first movie. Because at the end of the first movie, Candyman died. He got set on fire. And the ending was pretty fucking cool. You know, with Helen Lyle questioning the audience whether she'd be Candyman's psychic in the second movie or whether she was going to take over Candyman's role. Because she had a hook, she killed her husband Trevor. And even Helen was mentioned at the first start of the movie by Purcell in a newspaper article saying that Caprini residents believed that she was the Candyman. But now this film is taking place in New Orleans. And again, we're getting murders committed in the Candyman's name. So, why didn't Helen show up in this movie? Why not? Why make an ending like that in Candyman 1 where you're not going to proceed with the ending? It's like... It reminded me of Halloween where um, Halloween Fall, The Return of Michael Myers, they did a f fucking cool ending, you know, with Jamie holding the scissors, 
supposedly killing the mother in the bathtub and then when Halloween 5 The Revenge of Michael Myers came out they didn't shab in comparison with the ending this is what this felt like a disappointment so we've got no Helen Lyle the other thing that put me off about this was Tony Todd's performance he was fine, don't get me wrong. However, I felt like he didn't put his heart and soul into the Candyman character in this movie. In the first movie, he seemed scary. He seemed intimidating. He had like the death look in his eyes every time he killed his victims. and Very poetic in his phrases and all that kind of stuff. But in this movie, it seemed like something was like a little bit off. I mean, he kills Purcell in this... Um, toilet, you know, this um, restroom, and the way he killed him was pretty simple, he appeared behind him, shoved his hook in his back, Purcell bled from the lips a little bit, and then he drops to the floor and he dies, so it wasn't like a very, very gory scene, unlike the scene that we saw in the first movie where he killed the doctor, the psychiatrist, that was like an intense killing. But this one will seem more simpler. And then we introduce these new characters. But again, another thing that put me off about the movie was the direction it went in. I mean, the. Who was, was that annoying fat guy who was hosting the. Um, that carnival, the Farewell to the Flesh? The Fish King. And he was doing um, like a narrative role. Saying, oh yes, yes, today's the, the the farewell to the flesh, you know. The Kingfish was annoying in this movie, doing all these um, narrative roles. Because it didn't feel like a horror movie. It did, I don't know what the fuck it felt like, but it did not feel like a horror movie. You know, people were celebrating with masks and party graffiti flying everywhere and all that shit it didn't feel like a horror movie it didn't feel dark but we introduced this new school teacher by the name of um, Annie Tarrant she has a husband she brings Candyman into the world because she says Candyman is five times in the mirror in front of all of the students to prove that the Candyman is not real she is the sister of the guy who um, got accused of killing Purcell in the first movie, he's now in custody, going down for the murder. You know, and of course, she had the same father who died all them years ago, supposedly by the Candyman. But, Annie Tehran, she seems like there was nothing wrong with her performance in this movie, but. She, I didn't feel like she was as good as Virginia Madsen in the first movie. In the first movie, she seemed, Virginia Madsen seemed like a very convincing character, being obsessed with the Candyman and all that kind of stuff. But, um, Annie Tehran was just like, like a less convincing actress in this movie. There was nothing wrong with her performance, but I felt like it wasn't connecting well with the story. I mean, one of the students goes missing. He has like all this artwork drawing the Candyman. His father was a priest. He's retelling the story about Candyman, which we which we already know because we saw the first Candyman movie. The one scene I did like about this movie was the scene where they showed Candyman being tortured in the field by all those men that were hired by that wealthy landowner to torture him for sleeping with his daughter. That was a good scene. We saw a good gruesome scene where Candyman's hand was being cut off with that saw and being stung to death by the bees. And now it was good to see like a little flashback. But again, there are so many negative things about this movie. I mean, I enjoyed certain scenes. I enjoyed the scene where Candyman killed the detective and threw him through the window and he landed on the desks and all his guts popped out and all that shit. That was an interesting scene. Um, the scene where he kills Annie Tarrant's husband, you know, shoving the hook in his back. Again, only a drop of blood. Sorry. Again, only like a drop of blood popped out of his mouth and sweating on Annie Tarrant's face. 
he's hanging from the hook from Candyman. It's coming up his stomach, and then Candyman just throws him to the ground. And <sighs> there was a, a nice little effect where she scratched Candyman's face, and the bees were coming out of his cheek, and then it's sealed back up again. That, that scene was pretty okay, but um, you know, we find out that now Annie Tarrant is pregnant with a daughter. You know, Cannonman kills the mother. Ethan Tron gets shot trying to escape the police station. You know, she's on one big mission now to try and save the student in a class that is now missing. And it leads to like this big um this abandoned house, I believe, where Cannonman appears and he told the story about how he was tortured and everything was took away from him. And the fact that he fell in love with Caroline and he wanted to have a baby with her. she finds a way to kill Candyman by breaking the mirror and it was the worst C CGI I'd ever seen well not the worst I've ever seen but it was it was not the best CGI <laughs> where Candyman was breaking to pieces like a mirror and shattering and glass hitting on the floor and he explodes like into little glass pieces you know I'm like couldn't you think of a better way to like the Candyman die like in the first movie where he exploded and all the bees were on fire couldn't you have made like an ending like that? And then the ending. She's like telling a bedtime story to her daughter who was now born. Called her Caroline as well. And she just about she says the candy man for the fifth time in the mirror. She stops her and then the credits roll. Overall. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you everybody. This movie was essentially the first movie just retold again but with a, um, a less interesting script a less interesting actors and less interesting scenes that's what this movie felt like everything was less interesting it was a major step down from the first movie the music in it was okay but not as chilling as the first movie I remember the music being really chilling in the first movie the look of the candy man you know with his long coat and all that stuff it wasn't a nice looking costume like in the first movie where he had that big fur coat on. Again his performance, Tony Todd. Um, he admitted in interviews that he did not care about his role in Candyman Farewell to the Flesh like he did in the first movie. But when I met Tony Todd I asked him which was his favourite Candyman movie and he said the first one. But you can tell his heart and soul wasn't in the right place in this movie it wasn't like the right role it was nice to see Tony Todd come back and win Spoh's role as the Candyman if another actor would have took over it would have ruined it but um, it was nice to see Tony Todd come back but again it was a major step down this movie was it felt like a second script to the first movie that was rejected but they used that script to make a sequel that's what it felt like so when I watched it for the first time I wanted to hate the movie I was like, how the hell can you make a sequel like that to this? You got this legendary classic, the first Candyman movie. Then you got this movie. I was like, sequels, you know, the whole point of them is for films to get better and better. We all know they're never going to be as good as the original movies. But um, that's our point of sequels, they're supposed to get better and better. This was a step down. Candyman 2 fell into the flesh. And when I first watched it, I wanted to hate it. I really did want to hate it. But I can't hate it. It's it's mediocre. Mediocre, but with more negative um, reviews and positive ones. But I like it up to the point where I want to keep it as part of my collection and on Blu-ray as well. That's all I can say about it. But I was disappointed that Helen did not come back. I was disappointed that uh, it ignored certain things in the, from the first movie. I was disappointed because I really wanted to make Candyman one of my favourite all-time horror movies. And I wanted them to get better as they went along. But they only made three movies and they seemed to get worse as they went along. So it was kind of off-putting from that fact. But like I said, this movie came out in the year 1995. Um, 
This Blu-ray does have some special edition contents like interview with the actor Tony Tor, interview with actress um, Veronica Cartwright, the trailers, and there's even some um, interviews, some behind the scenes. What else is there? Yeah, there's several things in the extras, but I'm not really interested in them. I was really, really interested in one thing, and that was the, actor, the interview with actor Tony Todd. He's a, his interview is like about a half an hour long. It was interesting in what he had to say. But even he said that he only likes to talk about the first two movies. He doesn't really like to talk about the third, which I don't blame him, by the way. So, I know there's some fans of this movie out there. If you love the movie, that's fine. We're all different, but after one cannot get into Candyman Fell to the Flesh. I mean, the first one, I've seen it countless times. Fucking countless times. But this one, I should say, I've seen it about four or five times. And after just watching it moments ago to review it all for you right now, I still feel the same way about the movie now as I did all them years ago. So. Mediocre, but below average. <laughs> Okay, that's my review for Candyman Fell to the Flesh, everybody. Please, thumb it up, thumb it down, do what you got to do, and leave me your thoughts and comments. What do you think about Candyman Fell to the Flesh, or anything in the Candyman franchise? Thanks, everyone. Have a nice day.